Hey everyone, uh, I put this constraints document up and I wanted to just do a quick talk through. Um, my last talk through got very long so I'm going to try to keep this more succinct. We're going to talk about constraining sketches and if you're like me and you have your computer screen is uh, narrower than the current computer screen I'm using to record this, you might not be able to see all these constraints. It's going to be in a drop down menu. It's going to have automatically coincident is going to be the one you see. It looks like a sideways sort of tilted diagonal T um, with a point in the middle of it. So that's what you'll see and it'll be a drop down menu like this when you click to the side of it. And there's all the constraints. But since I've got this lovely uh, larger screen to work with, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now all of my constraints are showing up here. So it depends on what your setup looks like at home, whether you see all of them here or if they're going to be under a drop down menu with uh, with this guy. And if you were to do something like use a different one and do something with that and be done with it, it would show up with that different one at the top while you're working in that workspace. Um, so if you're confused about that, don't be confused. It's okay. So I'm going to go through these as quick as I can with as little um, tangential and necessary information as possible. Coincident means I've got two points that exist in the same location. This will keep your ends of your line segments together, and if you're making a polygon or a rectangle, it'll automatically hold those points together. Uh, so if you look at, let me um, spin it around. I'm going to hit Show Constraints. You can do this on any sketch. When you're in a sketch, you can click Show Constraints and it'll show you all the constraints that either you applied or things that were applied automatically by the system. Um, so the picture that I showed you all, it has got all these, uh, all these coincident constraints here. And you can see if you hover over it, it'll tell you which two line segments are coincident at that point. And there it is. Um, I do want to say, like, if I saw some people when they were drawing back, back way back when we were doing the dimension blocks, they would, there were some people who made a triangle using you know, this sort of method. And I'm going to zoom in because I can't, here we go. I'm going to zoom way in. I'm going to make them not quite touch. But when I go and zoom back out again, like it looks like it should be, it looks like it should be, um, it should be a complete triangle. I finished my sketch, uh, but I can't extrude it. Why can't I extrude this triangle? No, I'll show you constraints. Oh, these two are together. Okay. These two are together. These two are not, and so there's a couple ways you can fix that. You can say, oh, I meant for them to be together. Let me click on one of them and drag it, and then when it snaps to it and it shows me that constraint, I'll leave it like that. And now you can see it's a 3D shape. I can click, or it's a 2D shape. I can click it. It's got a boundary all the way around it. Um, the other way you can do that is you can hit the coincident button and say, look, I want these guys to be in the same place. And you might not want this, you might not want it to be like on the end point. You might just want it to be coincident to like the line itself. So if I want this end point to be coincident, let me click coincident to, for example, this line, I would put it right there. And now I can like drag it around and it'll stay on that line. I can change the angle of it. It'll stay on that line, but like it won't, it won't leave the line itself. It'll stay stuck to it. So that's cool. The other thing I could do is I could probably make these two lines coincident without using the endpoints. Um, but when I do that with the entire line, what that's going to do is it's going to make um, it's going to make all the points on this line segment coincident with all the points on this line. So it's going to be not just coincident at a point, but coincident as a line. So really, what it does is it makes them collinear. Look at that; they're collinear. That means that if you know, these are both segments, right? They don't go on forever. The line that they are lying on goes on forever in both directions, and it would hit both of these guys. It, they'd both be lying on the same line. Both of your segments here are lying on the same line. So you can use that to line up your lines. You can use it to attach points to each other. I need to say less words and move forward faster. No, oh, no. There we go. Okay, what's next? All right, so concentric. Concentric is very similar to collinear, except, um, or not collinear, coincident, except it's very specific to the centers of circles um, and arcs and ellipses, basically things with curvature. 
and centers of curvature. So if I have two circles, hey, there's two circles. Um, let me do another one right here. I kind of want this to be, oh no, it's not exactly in the center. Well, there's a few things I can do. I can make this um, concentric. Con meaning together, centric, your centers are together. The, usually the second thing you click is the thing that moves, I found. So hey, my circles are concentric. I can make this one bigger and smaller, but it still stays stuck at the center point. I can move them together now, since they are stuck together at the center. If I were to click and drag, like I can line them up, you can see it snaps to it. Coincident will also do the same kind of thing. It'll make them, um, it'll make this circle also. If, if, you, if it's the centers you're talking about, it'll make the centers uh, concentric. It'll make them all work out. So, you know, there's two ways of making your centers stick together. There's an arc, and maybe I'll do an ellipse as well. There we go. So I can make these guys concentric. That just means that my ellipse and my circle are centered. And I might also do these guys concentric. Oh no, everything's concentric. Wow, cool. I like planets, and this could be the... Saturn's ring, or, or the sky, you know. It's cool. Play around with it sometime. Don't just take my word for it. Okay. Parallel means you got two lines or segments that are going to have the same slope. So I'm going to draw two lines. And I don't want them to be stuck together on either end. There we go. Let's make them parallel. Parallel just means same slope means they're going to be the same distance away from each other. If I were to like fix one end down, I could, oops, no, not that, undo. Just an end point. There we go. I could do that and then I can like spin them around and they'll still be parallel to each other because I told them they need to be parallel. You'll notice that the, uh, the picture I use for that is a um, is a rectangle, specifically this rectangle. I show this constraint. Um, rectangles automatically have coincident corner points. You know the two line segments at each corner are there, coincident to each other. Then it also says rectangles have two sets of parallel sides, like other quadrilaterals that have two sets of parallel sides, like the rhombus. Um, what makes this guy not a rhombus is it's also got a perpendicular constraint on one of the corners. And what makes it not tilted around is because I've got a, a horizontal constraint automatically applied. You can take that off and you can spin a rectangle around and it, if you have these four coincident and these two uh, parallel constraints and this perpendicular constraint, then it will stay a rectangle no matter what angle it's at. So hey, parallel is cool. Pretty darn cool. Uh, tangent, I like to spend some time on tangent because tangent is really fun and interesting and uh, important. I ask if you guys heard of tangent before in class. A lot of people have not heard of tangent except as a, um, like, oh, I'm going on a tangent now and I'm talking about something completely different and then I come back to it. That's a tangent, yes. But tangent in this case, um, when we talk about slopes, the fact that we have parallel lines have the same slope, two things that are tangent will have the same slope as well at that exact location. Curves don't have a slope, right? If I have a, make a circle, or let me make a, an arc. This arc does not have a single slope. This arc has multiple slopes. There's a point over here where my slope is completely vertical at that point. There's a point at the top directly above the center where that is a completely zero slope. It's flat, it's horizontal. If I go ahead and make a line and let me escape here and I'm going to make this line tangent to my arc. Let's see what it shows. Did it choose to put it sort of in the middle? Yep. So it chose to kind of put the midpoint of this line tangent wherever I spin it around at. There you go. The slope right there being the same. It's about horizontal. There's a slope over here. Ooh. There's a slope over here. Oh dear. Now my arc is changing shapes. No. All right. There's a point where this is a vertical slope. Um, when you talk about slopes, you usually talk about lines, but 
because we know things like calculus in the future, we know that we can also have a line that touches a curve at exactly one point where the slope at that exact point and the slope of the line are identical. And that is what tangent is to a curve. Now, that's cool and all, um, but you can also use it to make your curves kind of smooth together. Like I made a line segment and two arcs, and I have these two arcs constrained to be tangent, and I have this arc and the line segment constrained to be tangent. If I were to take that off, oops, it's thinking. There we go. If I were to take that off and I were to change the shape of these arcs, like it's not necessarily going to keep them smooth at that transition spot right there. Um, the only way to really make them smooth is to try to get them so, I mean, kind of looks like it's tangent here, but it might not be exact. And if I go to move it and it changes everything, oh, it's going to be annoying. Same thing here if I were to move this arc. Um, no, nothing's tangent anymore. But, um, yeah, once it's tangent, what that means is right here where this vertical line hits this part of the curve, this curve at that point has a vertical slope. And so the slope matches this vertical line. These two curves, at this point where they touch, they have the same slope. And that's what that tangent constraint does. So you can make your curves transition nicely into each other and into line segments. Tangent is so much fun and it's very mathematical and I love it. Uh, horizontal vertical. You can make sure that two points are either at the same x value or y value. Basically, you make sure they're directly above each other or you make sure they're directly next to each other. And uh, and you'll see a lot of the time, like when you make a rectangle from scratch, it'll automatically have a horizontal constraint right there. If you take that away and you stick one of those corners down, you can spin it around the corner and make it not horizontal and vertical. Um, but you can also, let's say I want to line up, um, if I want to line up a line segment to be horizontal to like this end point here. I can do that. I can, if I mouse nearby it, the end point of that line I'm about to draw is going to be exactly the same height as the end point right here of this arc. So, oop. And let me make a completely vertical line segment. Now it's got two constraints. The line itself, the segment between these two endpoints, is vertical. And these, this endpoint here and the endpoint of my arc, they are horizontal to each other. They are across. If I were to draw a line from these two points, it would be horizontal completely. Right, perpendicular, that just means you got two segments that are at right angles to each other. And I wonder, and I probably could, eh, I don't want to, I was like, I wonder if I could make arcs that are perpendicular at the endpoints. Let's not, let's not waste any more time on playing around. You guys play around with these. It is so much fun um, for me. I don't know if y'all are going to have as much fun as I do, but I love it. Uh, perpendicular is one of the constraints that's put on when you make like a rectangle. It just means that I've got right angles between two line segments. It keeps everything orthogonal. I don't have to be horizontal and vertical, I can still have a right angle between two line segments. I'm not going to mess with that any farther. You can constrain two things to be the same length, two line segments to be the same length, no matter what way they're facing. These guys I constrain to be the same length, and then I put a dimension on so you can see what it looks like. They're the same dimension. You can do the same with a, with a curve, you can make them have the same radius of curvature. So I did an equal constraint on these two pieces, and my radius is the same on each of them. Now, the feature you click first determines what happens to the second. So the second thing you click is the one that changes. Okay. Midpoint's cool. Um, I think a midpoint got put on this by accident when I made something else, like I was drawing, I think, these circles here, and it accidentally made a midpoint here, because it was like, oh, this is vertical to that midpoint. Yep, that's vertical to that midpoint, that center there. <laughs> that's why there's a midpoint on my rectangle. Um, but I can make a midpoint on a line segment. And the easiest thing to do probably is to put a point down on the segment that's collinear, and then use the constraint to make it the center point of your line. And there it is. It's collinear, it's a center point. There it is. Um, you might even be able to, like, if I had two line segments like this where I have them attach, I can just go ahead and say, hey, I need this to be actually at the midpoint. There it goes. And um, 
I can now move this around, but it's stuck to the middle of the line. I can't slide it up and down the line. I can change the shape of the line. If I change the size of it, it changes where the midpoint is relative to the ends. So that's a cool, useful feature. You can make things symmetrical across that. You can also do that to an arc. I can have the midpoint of an arc. So let me do the midpoint on this arc. Here is a point. If I'm really, really careful, it'll snap too and just put a midpoint down for me. Isn't that nice? It's the midpoint on the arc. And then let me grab this guy. Oh, 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 it's not touching anymore. I'm going to make sure it is touching using the coincident constraint. Oh, uh, OK, that didn't do what I thought it was going to do. There we go. Okay, at that point, <laughs> look at all the constraints. At that point, everything's uh, the same slope right there. Anyways, messing around. Midpoints are fun. Um, normal is really fun too. If, uh, if, if tangent is similar to parallel because they've got the same slope at that point, then normal is similar to perpendicular because at that point, the normal line is perpendicular to that, uh, that curve at that point, to the slope of that curve. So, it's useful for um, for a lot of reasons. Let me get a let me get a line and a curve. There we go. It is a coincident, and I'm going to say it's normal. No matter what, it's going to be pointing towards the middle, the center of this curve. If I can slide it around, oop, and slide it around and it's going to be pointing towards the center. I can put it on the inside, it's going to be pointing along that radius towards the center. Um, if I do also a tangent line, let's do another one, and make it tangent to the curve. There we go. So now I've got, if I, mo if I move my point around, oop, I'm actually moving this guy here. Let me, um, let me fix this guy and this guy, and this guy. Now that arc shouldn't move, but if I move this around, you can sort of see. It looks almost a snap to the midpoint. You can kind of see how normal and, uh, normal and tangent relate to each other around the curve. A lot of fun, love it. I also made it normal to the spline that I made over here. I don't like splines. <laughs> if I mess with it, like it's not gonna look, it's not gonna be nice. If I change the way this curves, whoa, I don't know why it's sliding where it's sliding. Oh, that's interesting. Probably has to do with where I've made those points. Oh, uh, spline. Oh dear, I've, whoa, that line has completely disappeared. It's probably, oh gosh, I have no idea where it is. Undo. Undo. Undo the mess I made. Thank you. All right. Um, I think that's all I want to talk about. There's, uh, oh, symmetric. Symmetric is cool. I can make two things symmetric across the point. Um, like over here, I made sure my, my endpoints are symmetric, I think, and I made my lines symmetric. So they're the same shape reflected over. If you look over that, it's like it's gone in a mirror. Those two are reflected. Um, Pierce is cool. I did Pierce over here. I'm going to do that really quickly. Just make a sketch in front plane. That's a rectangle of some sort. And make a sketch in the right plane. That's like a line segment of some sort. Oh, undo. I don't want that. I want my sketch plane. Right plane. Let's say I wanted this to go through like... I want it to to touch the top of this square, like a rectangle. I want it to hit the top of the rectangle. I can move it around and like try to get it to, to touch that, but I mean, it's it can't, it doesn't reference it automatically, so it doesn't snap to it or anything. Um, it looks like it might be touching. Hey, no, it's not, it's not. So how do I make it do that? I can use the pierce constraint. I can click on the line segment and I can click on the top edge of that rectangle. There we go, there we go, move it together. So now those are constrained together. If I were to change this, like it's still going to touch the top edge of that rectangle. And that's useful for if I wanted to line anything up um, that's not all in the same 2D space. Um, 
And that's cool. And you've seen me use fix. That keeps the geometry in the exact spot in space without having to dimension it. If I wanted to fix a point, I could dimension it like to the center. I could say, hey, this point is a certain distance from the center lines. Um, Like, here's my point. If I want it to stay right there, I could say it is that distance from his point, and it's that distance from there. And now, like, if I click on it and drag, it won't it won't go anywhere. It's stuck there. But it's a lot easier just to tell it, hey, fix this here. And I can't move it around. It is fixed there. Can't go anywhere. If I delete that constraint, I'm back to being able to move it around again. And curvature will match a curvature of a spline to another curve. I hate splines. I'm not good at them yet. I'm still learning them. If I were to make a spline... There we go. Let's see if I can... Uh, that's bad. Let's see if I can match the curvature to this guy. Oh, I mean, I can. And it's matched, like, in there, sort of. But I've changed the shape of my spline, and it is ridiculous right now, what it looks like. So... Let me move this point in. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Anyways, it's uh, it's late. It's been 20 minutes. Y'all are probably tired of hearing me talk. Have a wonderful evening. If you have any questions about constraints or if you're playing around and something completely messes up and looks weird and you want to know what's going on, um, take a screenshot or share with me your, your document and I can try to help you figure out why your constraint is doing what it's doing. There's a... Um, there's a... Uh, there's a whole little activity in Project Lead the Way. Let me see if I can pull it up. And I might put that on uh, on Canvas. There's this practice with constraints and dimensions. It'll get you used to the idea of how to play with these things. When I say play, I don't mean like just goof off. I mean try to see if you understand how they work. Um, this is right here. Let me pull it over. This guy right here. This is section 1.3.3. And it talks all about like walking you through playing with a sketch down here. And you can do all of this, all these step-by-step -step things, as long as you're aware that when it talks about Fusion 360, it, it's telling you slightly different things, words, slightly different images, slightly different methods than, um, than on shape would be. Um, but a lot of these things, like you can see the constraints in the picture, a lot of them are very similar constraints to what we've got in Onshape. Um, I think this is a thing where it wants you to match this guy, put these holes down, etc. And then it talks about design intent. Ooh, create a 3D solid model of a slider block you have not yet modeled using a design intent to a slider block. Oh, maybe for the trammel toy. Y'all, I need to print some trammel toy pieces and order the bases, and we are going to do the trammel toy activity at some point. Um, I just have to get all that material together. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Keep an eye out for the quiz or whatever I'm going to put up that's related to what, what kind of constraints we've got here. And have a wonderful rest of your evening or day, whatever time of day it is where you're at. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.